gentleman maker speaking, where the PCBs are fine, but the parties are finer. Yes, you want to have a party cake, that's no problem. Wait, you want beer? How, how much have I got? Yeah, we could buy some, or I could brew some. How long? Four weeks. Hello? Hello? Hmm, I assume we can do it. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, well, look no further, because in this episode of The Gentleman Maker, we're going to be building the Smart Brewer, a brewing tank that is smart. So before we go into the bill of materials and how we're actually going to put this thing together, let's look at a quick block diagram of the Smart Brewer. The basic idea is to use something called a hydrometer to read the alcoholic content of the beer. The Smart Brewer will also have several other sensors including a pressure sensor, a temperature sensor and an alcohol vapour sensor. Then on the top of the Smart Brewer we have a particle photon so we can relay all this information to the cloud. So for the brewing side of the project you want to get one of these brewing kit. Now this kit will make up to 23 litres which is 40 pints so it'll do about 40 to 50 of these containers. When you get one of these kits it's very important that you read the instructions as to how to actually make your brew but in general it really just involves getting one of these sort of uh, lager kits or something and then essentially you sterilise all your equipment, you, you whack it all in, you stick the yeast in, you keep it warm for about two weeks or so then you bottle it afterwards and then let it ferment for a further two weeks. Now the problem with a hydrometer is that they're analog devices, you have to read them manually by eye, but I want to make this into a digital system. So what I'm going to do is stick a magnet on the top, and as this height changes, as the alcohol level changes, this will go up or down depending, and the distance from the sensor will change and therefore we can record that number. Then we can correlate that to how much alcohol has been produced. So for the electronic side of this project, you will need a particle photon, a DHT11 sensor, a MAG3110 magnetic sensor board, an Adafruit I2C barometric and temperature sensor, an MQ3 alcohol vapor sensor, one 5.6 kilo ohm resistor, two 1k ohm resistors, a very small magnet, some circuit construction material, I would recommend breadboard for this project, various wires and other wiring equipment, and a micro USB B lead for powering the photon. All the parts in this project can be found from DigiKey, link in the description below. Here we have the scheme schematic for the Smart Brewer. Powered by a photon, most of the sensors either use an I2C bus or just produce an analog output, with the exception of the DHT11, which has a unique single wire bus. Two pull-up resistors are needed for pulling up the I2C lines, and both I2C components are connected in parallel. The MQ3 sensor, which is used for detecting alcohol vapor, is connected to the analog input of the photon, and the DHT11 uses D2 as the reading pin. While the code for the Smart Brewer may look complex, it's actually rather simple, and all we do is take advantage of pre-made libraries. For example, we use the Adafruit DHT library, which helps us connect the DHT11 to the photon. We also have the Adafruit IO particle library, which allows our particle photon to connect to the Adafruit IO IoT service. We use the wire library for I2C, and then we have a couple of defines for the addresses on our I2C components. Initial setting up of the code just creates a couple of feeds that we can save our data to on the Adafruit IO website. And the setup code configures some of the pins on the photon as well as the I2C components. The main loop of code simply takes readings from the different sensors and sends them to the AIO system or the Adafruit IO service. Then from the Adafruit IO website, we can actually track the data graphically. So here we can see the temperature over the days since the Smart Brewer has been operational. The sudden change between these two points here was actually due to a power cut, which is why there is no readings between these two dates. The top of the brewing container has all our sensors, including the MQ3 alcohol vapor sensor, a magnetic sensor, the barometric sensor, and the DHT11. You'll notice that all these solder connections are lead free, which I nearly made the mistake of using lead solder, and that would have been a bit of a problem. And each one of these sensors, with the exception of the DHT11, has been covered in a sort of plastic covering. It will obviously not this one as well, because this needs to actually get access to the air. And the plastic covering just helps to stop these things getting spilled on. Which brings me to another point. 
the fluid in this tank is not going to be coming right up to the top. It's going to be going down to about the 23 litre mark, which is about two and a half inches from the top. So the fluid's going to be somewhere down here. So this should really be in the dry. But sometimes some brews, such as lager, can foam up. So there is going to be a small risk of this sort of getting covered. Sterilization is absolutely critical in brewing. So I'm going to go and spray all of this with some IPA before I actually start to use the tank, which will also have a sterilizer put into it, but just to make sure that none of this stuff here is contaminated with certain bacteria. This is the hydrometer setup. And as you can see, the hydrometer with a little magnet attached to the top sits inside a small container vessel. I say vessel, it's more of a framework and it's made of connects and I actually checked online that this stuff is non-toxic so it shouldn't interfere with the brew and it shouldn't be poisonous to drink. The only disadvantage of putting the magnet on top of the hydrometer is that it's now going to have a different reading so when I glued this together and tested it I wanted to see what the reading would be so I know that in normal water it's actually 0.98 instead of the 1. But again this shouldn't have much effect on the final product as we're still going to see a height change as the alcohol content inside the brew changes over time. So all we need to do now is hook up our sensors with the wires to the actual photon, put it together and try and go for a brew. So while we see a quick time lapse of the brewing system being put together and the ingredients being mixed, let's have a look at the sensors. Now the first sensor that we're using in this project is the MQ3 sensor. And this is an alcohol vapor sensor. Now the reason why I'm using this sensor is because I'm curious to see the alcoholic content of the atmosphere above the brewing fluid as it brews. And I want to see if I can correlate the amount of alcohol vapor in the air above the fluid to the alcoholic content of the fluid. That way, future smart brewers could not have to use the invasive hydrometer technique, which involves having the hydrometer sit in the fluid. The second sensor we're gonna be using in this project is the DHT11, and I want to have a look at the temperature of the air above the fluid as well. The DHT11 can also allow me to measure humidity so I can also see if this has an impact on the quality of the brew. The third sensor is the MAG311 magnetic sensor and this is what we use to measure the height of the hydrometer in the fluid and this directly correlates to the alcoholic content of the fluid. The final sensor is the Adafruit barometric sensor and this measures the pressure of the vessel. If a positive pressure is kept inside the vessel, that means we can guarantee that stuff can't get in and can only come out. So if everything goes to plan, you should have your brew ready for Oktoberfest. This is a gentleman maker having a pint. See you next time. Uh. Ah, I found my resistor. See you next time.